So Nick, I feel like there's only two types of people in the world. Okay. Uh, those who love Neil Diamond and those who don't. And thankfully, we're both people that, that love Neil Diamond, right? Um, Nick? 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 Before, uh, what about Bob? Uh, Bill Murray was kind of a little in a slump. Uh, he was not really, I mean, he did some hits, but he wasn't really the marquee. I mean, obviously he had funny bits in like uh, Little Shop of Horrors, mm -hmm. and he was okay in Ghostbusters, but him being the headline and having the, the funny person, uh, this was a hit. Everybody, you know, I know about Scrooge, but this was made after Scrooge, but Scrooge was guarded as a flop. It's actually yeah. not successful now, so... Uh, prior to this movie, it was Bill Murray needed this hit. Yeah, I think so. And for those of you who have not seen the film, uh, Murray plays Bob Wiley. Bob Wiley. Um, and of course, it also stars Richard Dreyfuss as kind of a successful, uh, self-absorbed psychotherapist who I'll takes on the, the client from hell, basically. <laughs> yeah. um, what it's, what's interesting about this film for me is that I feel like there is a subgenre, a sub-subgenre, if you will, of comedy films that I call stressful comedy. And I think that's what What About Bob is. I think it aligns itself with uh, like a Meet the Parents as well, where yeah. you, I can understand someone not enjoying this movie because of the stress level that the comedy Something comes like from. Something like Birdcage. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I spoke with somebody who'd rented uh, Meet the Parents, this is back when it came out originally, and they said like, I couldn't watch the movie because they couldn't believe all those horrible things that happened to Ben Stiller. And I think that that's kind of the level of this movie too, is it, it hinges on the fact that you're okay with people's lives being ruined. That's what you've got to really be okay with for a comedy film like this. I am okay with that. <laughs> so Bob Wiley is a germaphobe. He's OCD. He's anxiety prone. He's thinking ahead before he has to do the tasks. And how do you conquer that? Well, you conquer the little steps at a time. So there is some logistics to this. Yes. But it's ridiculous, right? Uh, Richard, uh, Richard Dreyfuss and Bill Murray, I think this works because they are two different people in the same movie. They are nothing alike. In fact, Richard Driver's very famous that he had a horrible time making this movie. Oh, yeah. They did uh, not get along. Get along. <laughs> uh, Bill Murray, I think, knows that he's going to be an agitator in a movie. He's just not going to stop. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's that's a very uh, Bill Murray-esque thing to do, is I feel like he does like to agitate. I think that's just something yeah. that brings him joy. And we say this as self-obsessed uh, Saints fans um, here in yep. Minnesota. But, uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. We're like... They're, we talked a uh, while ago about like Soap Dish, and my criticism of that was that the actors felt like they were in two groups that were in two different kind of movies. This works because it's two actors that are in two different movies. That yeah. Dreyfus is playing things mostly yeah, realistic, I guess, as, as he would go throughout most of the film. It isn't until near the end that he starts to unhinge, whereas uh, Murray is basically playing screwball the whole time. Um, and they're embracing those sides of each other. So even though they didn't like each other, it's kind of nice because their characters don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a sense of something you appreciate from Bill Murray. You understand nowadays that you're, you understand now you know, shaking hands with penis. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just oh so yeah, more than <laughs> anything right now. I was like, this is a that, like, you, everything you're supposed to laugh at now. You're like, he's smart, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he has this one. Of, I love the little subplot of him having this pet fish that he believes that he understands whatever he's saying to him. Yep. His name is Gil, of course. But it's a wonderful metaphor of him being a, like a fish out of water kind mm -hmm. of thing. So it plays on that as well. But he's also kid friendly. He, I think he plays more uh, after a rewatch. He's more of a kid in this than I actually remember. Yeah, it's similar to I guess a very different movie, but Jack with Robin Williams in the lead, where it's like an adult that plays better to the children uh, than yeah. he does to the other adults. He has a, more of a kinship with the younger because yeah. he hasn't grown up, which is, in a lot of ways, Bob Wiley's, probably a lot of his issues might even just stem from, you know, he believes he has all these things, but he doesn't. I mean, that's why he's able to claim he has, he goes like, why well, you know, have you ever heard of Tourette's and stuff? And like, and it's the I worst know. display of fake Tourette's I've ever seen. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, he plays up kind of like having fun with the kids no. teaching the other kid a bunch of swear words too it's it's similar in that and what's funny is that being similar to jack the film was actually originally written for robin williams um to play bob wiley because the screenwriter of the film had worked in essence on dead poet society okay uh and williams so was too busy kind of williams couldn't take the role it would have been a wonderful it would i don't think it would have been as dark it would have been a very different movie but i think it's funny because yeah. you can as you watch the movie knowing that 
and I, I read this just before I started watching it again, you can see how things were kind of catered to Robin Williams. And I think that's what makes more of an unhinged portrayal and just kind of a more black comic kind of portrayal because yeah. Bill Murray goes a little darker usually. Yeah. So. Uh, so you have a lot of great supporting cast. You have Julie Haggerty, who's mm -hmm. on Airplane. This is actually, when I saw it, I was like, where have you been? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually known for playing a, one person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I always say, especially me being a film director, too, Use your skill. What, use what you're good at. And she's really good at playing this bewildered person all the time. Yeah, she's always like, she almost kind of seems like she's a fish out of water all the time. Yeah. You know, where she's she's not really in, I, I sometimes would think she's not even really thinking that she's acting. She's just <laughs> kind of there and she yeah. plays it up well. It's a skill set and she uses it very well. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you show off what you're good at, right? Uh, and she's very good at doing this. And then you have the kids who actually do a very good job. Uh, Catherine Irby, mm -hmm. if I got it right, yeah. um, she went on to do the TV show Criminal Law, uh, Law and Order Criminal Intent. She That's did that her. Two, yes. For okay. 10 years uh, with Vincent D'Onofrio, who's mm -hmm. a very committed actor. So you can play with, you know, do scenes with him, mm -hmm. you're doing a good job. And then Charlie, what, Cosmos? Cosmo, I believe. Cosmos. Went on to be in a hook with Robin Williams. He finally <laughs> got his Williams chance. So. And he's, uh, uh, before, and a year before this, he was in Dick Tracy. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So, and he had to start, he was, uh, what, that uh, endless appetite in Dick Tracy? Yep. Yeah. And then here he's trying to learn to dive. Yeah, and I think what's... What I really appreciate about it, too, is that you have these different perspectives on so many things, looking at a Bob and at Leo and how they approach different situations, and then even just looking at that compared to how Leo approaches Bob, and like, how do, how do I get him off my back? He, he kind of, you see everything in, through those lenses, and it makes for an interesting experience to watch, a stressful one, I might add, but <laughs> looking at how he tries to teach his kid to swim, and how Bob tries to teach the kid to swim by himself, not being comfortable how to swim. <laughs> so, right, there's definitely that hierarchy of already that Leo Marvin already thinks he's above him mm -hmm. and he has more ambition. He's got this ambition that, well, Bob's getting in the way, but Bob's his patient. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I always say comedy at the core is all about immaturity, right? You mm -hmm. can't really be a fully mature person and be in a comedic comedy role. And definitely, Leo Marvin has some maturity issues. Um, still, we're going to do Talking with Puppets. <laughs> yep. <laughs> as well as being kind of a malicious schemer, taking property away from, you know, the locals, and the locals don't really regard him as well. Um, and a lot of the people in the psychiatry world don't really appreciate Dr. Leo Marvin. Yeah, he's, uh, he's more seen as a smudge than anything else. Like, he's, yeah. you know, he's kind of... Even yeah, the the people in town. I I actually really like those two characters. I don't know if we ever get their names, but they they wanted the house that Leo got, and then they're trying to kind of like help Bob. Uh, <laughs> and like throughout the entire film, they're kind of just that bane where it's like they're causing. I really like them in the movie. I wish yeah. we'd gotten more time with them because all they wanted was their dream house, and Marvin co comes in and takes it. Uh, and and watching him become slowly unhinged. I think maybe my true fault with the movie, because I, I do think the movie's a little bit of a mix. There's today. some misbeats. Um, yeah. I think the true fault with the film is that we didn't get a chance to meet Leo before he knew Bob. Because most of the things that happen to Leo in the film are things you could feel bad for him. You know, you right. really could. But they pepper it with the occasional burst of, like, crudeness and rudeness and, and mistrust. I mean, yeah. at his core... He's he's trying to go on vacation. He's being bothered by a patient. I have I agree. Yeah. I tried to leave my job for like a week just to do things, and and I've gotten calls from people at work. I've gotten like <laughs> problems that can be solved without having to contact me. I still remember that the morning I I was setting out to propose to my now wife, uh, I got a call from work. I was in Hawaii. You can't get me to come in today. So I, like I, yeah, I, yeah. I get that like that frustration level that they have with him and what he's dealing with. I just think it would be better if we knew him as a villainous kind of character before. And that's all building up to um, an, an event, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, so you have the whole dinner event. But yeah, it's all about, the ch and I like to talk, comedy is always about immaturity at mm -hmm. the core and how they're navigating maturity. Definitely, yeah, you feel bad for Leo Marvin, but there's some other tools you could do. You're, in fact, even the psychiatrist, you're better than this. Yeah. You, you have some other things you could do rather than just trying to 
get revenge out to Bob. Yeah. Up, right? And that's why I think the film's funnier as Leo becomes more unhinged, as he gets angrier, as yeah. he lets his problems kind of come out, because then you psychoanalyze him and his anger management issues and his perfectionism and his, his ability to not see anything from someone else's point of view. He cannot walk in other people's shoes. No. And that is why he consistently, like, his family, like, doing something like inviting Bob in, inviting him to be on the show. And this is like, in my mind, I was like, if I wrote a book like that, I'd be like, I just, I just want that day. That day is for me. <laughs> and, like, to have it ruined, I felt bad for him, but then in the sense that you you want to not like him, and you, you see the way he acts and how he's unable to learn. Right. So there's certain things that Bob does that kind of, like, not really happy that he does. There's certain things that Leo does that you're not really happy that he does. And it's almost like you guys are destined to be together yeah. and wreck everything. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the sequence in which Bob tries to, uh, I can't remember the name, but the, the lady from the call center, he goes in and like, oh, yes, and a- like tries to ascertain <laughs> Leo's location is, is some high grade comedy because of the way he, he fails and then he tries a different angle and he fails and he tries a different angle. And he finally like, you know, he's basically a lock pick. You know, and just trying to like figure out how to turn those dials, and yeah. that's I think the the best stuff. And I think that's Bill Bob, Murray in real life, right? Yeah, seeing Bob try and fail and try a different way and succeed a little bit more, and that's really funny to me. So there's a lot of great supporting roles. If you want to do like the of the IMB, um, I think that the psychiatrist at the uh, sanitarium, mm-hmm. she's a accomplished actress. I can't remember her name, but yeah, even the operator, she was in a lot of TV shows in the mm-hmm. '80s and. Um, in the 90s as well so there's a lot of great assemble cast um, if you didn't know Frank Oz it was he was the voice of Yoda mm-hmm. so um, he's does a- he appear as the, the other doctor the doctor yeah. that was- uh, yes, okay. yes. he comes into the film so quickly that I was like is that him from 91 because I most yeah. recently remember him in Knives Out he plays a very small role in that too yeah. and I was like that is him right but I didn't want to pause and go check yeah even Bob gets into him like mm-hmm. maybe you should do this bit. Yeah. oh <laughs> so my wife being a pharmacist uh, she's she's was watching that part of me and she was like no doctor would take that kind of crap from anybody <laughs> and I was like that's kind of the beauty of it is that yeah. Leo is like there's a certain point in the film where Leo is the sane guy in the room and everybody else is insane yeah. because everyone seems to listen to Bob and, and like that great moment inside the sanitarium where like he's yeah. cracking jokes and everybody else is like in on it yeah. and I, I still use that joke to this day <laughs> roses are red <laughs> I know, violets it's are blue I'm a schizophrenic and so am I <laughs> So yeah, it's almost because I think that's a why Bill Murray works in this because mm-hmm. he's already has a charisma, even though it's a character that's kind of repulsive a little bit. Even like the bus scene, yeah, fits very well why he's repulsive and he's kind of in his own little world. But there's certain charisma that you want to hang out with him a little bit. I think yeah, Bill Murray knows how to get under your skin, and he also knows how to have fun. Yeah. And, like, it's that thing where, you know, you, you kind of watch to see how he's going to enter those situations. And that's true. Like, there's moments where he decides to take a scene dark. And there's moments he t- tries to take a scene, like, over the top. And he, he goes in two different directions. And that's kind of what makes his performance so much fun to watch is that you don't know which direction he's going to go. Compared to, like, a thing like Scrooge or Groundhog Day, which we've talked about before, be you know exactly good. which way he's going in that situation. Yeah. They're both very funny movies, but what's usually... Interesting is that it goes two different ways back and forth. <laughs> oh, like, he picked flowers for Julie Hagen and they're all like dead they're weeds. They're all dead, yeah. yeah. They're all dead weeds. Oh, aren't they pretty? <laughs> yeah. And again, you're not sure if, if Bob is using that situation or if he's generally unaware. Yeah, unaware, right. So, that's the whole... That's, well, that's Jill Mar- uh, Bill Murray on his tombstone. Yeah. Is he aware or just didn't care? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I, I still get a kick out of it. I mean, we didn't even talk about it and make fun of it. Yeah, we still kind of laugh about it, yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it's a mixed bag of movie. I think, unlike a film like we talked about recently, Soap Dish, where I kind of lean towards not recommending it, this one I lean towards recommending it. Again, there's things that I like about the movie. It's not, you know, my wife had watched it for the first time with me, and she said it was, it was almost too stressful for her. And I was like, that's kind of where I, you know, yeah. stressful comedy comes in, where it just may not work for certain people, and it may not work for certain moods. I think if you're looking for a, if you're having a bad day and you're looking for a no, comedy, I don't think this no, is the right No, 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 like, You know, like, no, no, certain no, things it's like, like, I'll watch, like, Dumb and Dumber if I'm having a bad day because the, the film is so zany and so yeah. weird that it lifts my spirits. I don't think this is a spirit-lifting comedy. I do think it kind of leans towards black comedy, but I will give it a slight recommend. It's a slight recommendation for us. Hey, have you seen What About Bob? Yeah, we want to know your thoughts about it as well. Are you named Bob? Do you have any problems with that? Oh my um, god, my friend in high school's name is Bob. You know how many times we said that in school? Oh 
<laughs> or he caught him. Sl- we're, we're, we're waiting for him to fall asleep in class. So oh, he can fair just, enough. Yeah. Um, well, the other thing I want to know too is most people say that they identify with Leo in the film. And I think I do too, just because again, like I felt for him during those painful moments. But did you identify with Bob more? Have you ever, you know, like you know, been costume looking for help? Yeah, yeah costume wise. Yeah, costume. probably. I'm not gonna wear long yeah. sleeves and shorts and with white socks pulled up. I'm yeah. not gonna that. No, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. yeah. So you know, have you ever, you know, kind of been stuck in that situation? <laughs> are you a Bob or are you a Leo? We want to know your thoughts <laughs> down below. Let us know, and don't forget too, you can like this video. It takes like two seconds. You won't give me two seconds. See, you like the video. We appreciate that so much. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe as well. That also takes two seconds, but do it on your own time. And then uh, you can get our videos every week when they drop. We've got two videos a week coming your way. Yes. Um, and another way that you can help support the show. Patreon! Check out the Patreon. Patreon.com slash KyleNickOnFilm. The link's down in the description. Uh, something as small as a dollar a month can help support independent content creators. You don't believe um, how much it helps. And it man. really does help kind of us to expand. I mean, our goal is to get this site growing constantly and be doing more and more content for you guys because we enjoy it we know you guys enjoy watching or you wouldn't be here right now yeah. um and so go ahead and check out that patreon all right uh i'm nick from the st paul filmcast and i'm kyle from goatfilmreviews.com and we're gonna go listen to some needle diamond i'm gonna prove to him that he's great while we do death therapy yes